Welcome back to the Maximum Mileage Running Podcast. My name is Nick Hancock. I am your host and USCA and UK Athletics Certified Coach. And I am here with... Faye Johnson, UK Athletics Certified Coach and Personal Trainer. We did it, Faye. We did the intro correctly. Absolutely. <laughs> it's been a while. It it's has. It's been a while. I just decided to condense it. Just that's what it is. Full stop. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to see you, Faye. It's nice to talk to you. I mean, we talk to each other anyway, but it's nice to be talking to you again in a podcast context because we've had a little bit of a break. There's been a lot going on um, yeah. for both of us. Um, you know, life has its yeah. trials and tribulations. And um, as, as you know, anybody who's been listening to this podcast know, you know, my wife's uh, health issues have um, been, been a feature um, mm. of our lives. Um, uh, we're in a pretty good place with that at the moment, yeah. though. Yeah, great. Um, as 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 you know, so yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, to to the point where she, you know she's sort of back on the treadmill herself and trying to get her fantastic going, going again. Um, so yeah, yeah, we uh, she she had to go for some targeted radiotherapy, and as part of that, they uh, they had to do um, a, a very high definition MRI to sort of do the planning, and and they did say to her at the beginning of the. Uh, uh, of the day you know just to sort of warn you when we do this um this mri it can often show more cancer which mm. it did it showed two more tumors on top of the one the two that she were she she was in there to be treated for um and they treated all four but she did ask them you know what what's um what about the other ones why why wouldn't you treat the other ones you, you're going to do these new ones what about the other ones and they said what other ones she said well the other ones she they said you don't have any other ones you originally had, and we never knew this, so 17, um, uh, yeah, lesions, you know, tumours, whatever word you want to use uh, in her brain. And now she's only got four, and they've treated all four of them. So, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's been quite a um, groundbreaking few yeah. weeks for us, really, isn't it? It's uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So but great news. So, yeah, that's kind of been... Uh, a big thing in our lives recently. Um, yeah, what's Absolutely. been going on with you, Faye? Um, so, running wise, I um, uh, last weekend, well, two Saturdays ago, I did man versus horse. You did race, which um, I have not done since twenty nineteen. So, make basically a decade ago. <laughs> in 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 covid times it's basically 10 years ago um yeah it was funny actually because i went through a series of um i'm not doing it i am going to do it i can't do it it really felt like a massive thing it's just i think because last time i did it in 2019 i was running the best i've ever run i mm. won the race in 2019 but equally, I was five years younger uh, and all the other stuff that's come about in the last five years. And I then came to the point where I was like, I just want to run and have a good day out. And that's exactly what I did. And um, I, it was great, to be fair. The weather was perfect. It wasn't too hot, but it didn't rain. Mm. I remembered the course as it's a great course. It's beautiful obviously the uniqueness of running alongside horses um and the 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 great mix of people you get doing it as well um and yeah I finished seventh lady uh and the top seven we finished within 10 minutes of each other so it was yeah, quite yeah. close it was you know yeah. it was a good race and um yeah some 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 great performances from from people but yeah I was just it was just good to do it and to remind myself and it had actually been probably 12 months since I'd done a marathon. So, it, mm -hmm. yeah, it was last summer that I last did a marathon. Everything else has been half marathon or shorter. So um, it was it was good and I enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I've been up to recently. Yeah, well, you had a good build-up to it and you, you finally did the sub-20. Oh, and that, half, yeah. Half when I'd been bugging you about so I wanted to do a sub 20 at Monmouth Park run. Um, and then I had not, one. had not planned that at all. Rocked up and managed to do, I think, 1947. 
Um, and it didn't feel like 1947, which for me is the bonus. It felt uncomfortably comfortable <laughs> is the mm. way I term it. I was uncomfortable, but I felt in control. And when I was looking at the time, I was like, whoa, hang on a minute. This is this is quicker than normal, but it felt good and it felt and I was chuffed. Um, mm. So, yeah, that was good. Well, yeah, it was part of a good training block for man versus horse or Faye versus horse, as I was calling yes. it. Yes, yes. And, uh, and yeah, thoroughly deserved. So, yeah, yeah. But that means now you've got to train faster in your uh, in your various seasons. I know, zones. exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's always a price to pay. Indeed, indeed. Good. And what about good. your running, Nick? What about yours? Um, yeah, going all right. Um, I think sort of picking up on previous uh episodes i was training for uts um 100k but i pulled out because i'd had i just had a few weeks in a row where i got a throat infection something else twisted my ankle one week it was like four weeks in a row where i just couldn't do any long runs and get consistency so i thought right just call it a bad job draw a line under the sand um i've already got i already had lakeland um lakeland 50 in my diary and ccc in my diary i thought right just kind of um bring things back down and uh and sort of focus on them so so that's what i've been doing um i still went up to uts it was a great weekend some great performances um got to see mark derbyshire just as he was coming over um snowden at nine o'clock in the morning uh on the 100 uh so andy berry who's been a previous guest on here uh finishing um uh, yeah i involuntarily volunteered um <laughs> i was with sharon the mc yeah uh, telling her who was kind of running down the road she was calling over the microphone and, and it was brilliant and i just you know i don't want to sort of come across as some sort of utmb fanboy because i you know they have had their shortcomings in the past um but for those people who hate utmb you know what i saw at uts you know it was all about the runners I mean, that whole kind of race village, people coming across the yeah. finish line. It was just a big celebration of running uh, and the volunteers out there and, and stuff. It, it was it was a really good weekend. Great. Um, awesome. Yeah, in terms of in terms of my running, yeah, I'm putting in some good, good training at the moment. Um, I ran a five-miler on the weekend, uh, a road five-miler, uh, quite a hilly road five-miler, actually, and I managed to run... Um, run a PB 2939 I think it was um which is just under 6 minute mile pace brilliant uh, with, yeah. with a big old with a big old hill in it so yeah I was pretty pretty pleased with that um yeah I've been, been putting in some good sessions oh since actually since we uh, I think recorded the last episode I can't remember now but I ran Newport Marathon I ran a PB there yeah I, I don't think remember. we've recorded since Newport Marathon no no, no. So, um, so yeah, I got a PB there. I got two fifty three, and I did that on no specific marathon training. I think your terms, no your training. words on social media were, "I woke up feet and I felt cute, so I did a Newport marathon." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Of course." <laughs> yeah, no, it, would, uh, it went went pretty well. I, I sort of blew yeah. up in the last uh, last three miles. I, 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 I did. Uh, I did lose about four minutes, but uh, it, it was good enough for a good for age. And I've actually decided that my sort of big goal next year is going to be to try and do a championship running uh, a championship time of 2.39. Nice. See if I can do it. Yeah. Just going to see if I can do it. I think I can do it. Um, I need to believe that I can do it. Otherwise, I might as well give up now. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, at 42, will I be 42? I'll be 42 then. Um, I haven't decided which marathon I'm going to do it at. I'm looking at, um, I definitely won't be doing Newport again because it was uh, <laughs> dull. The second time I've done it and it was long. It's um, a shame they've changed the course to be fair because it used to take in some, let's say, more interesting uh, routes and views mm. than two laps around the city okay. centre. So I think... It's a bit of a shame, but yeah. Well, it was still. It was still. You went through the city centre a little bit, and it was still out on the Gwent levels. But yeah, it was but too it didn't. The boring bit of the Gwent levels. There was just nothing there. No, exactly. I mean, yeah, perhaps not very inspiring as courses no. go. 
I mean, if you don't really care and you just want to go and do a time, great one. Exactly. To, to time yeah. It was so flat. Um, yeah, very like, flat. Like the previous, previous course was. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no, running's going all right. I've got um, Lakeland at the end of next month. Um, I've been up and recce the first 25, well, actually the first sort of 30 miles of it, um, which has got most of the elevation in. So, um, so yeah, I feel pretty good about, about Lakeland. Uh, I feel pretty good about my fitness at the moment. And then I've Great. got CC, CCC at the end of August, which is going to form part of the uh, family van yeah. adventure. Um, and yeah, I guess my, my sort of big news is um, uh, on a sort of a running coaching front is, um, you know, it, it's a, it's very rare that you find a coach, a running coach that actually does this full time. Um, most have got, you know, day jobs and I've always had a day job um not that I've ever considered my running to be a side hustle just the same as um you Faye. I don't think we, it, it's a disservice to the people that um, yeah that's you know, yeah that, that it's it's services to call it I, a side always, hustle. I always think it's for me it's a passion that I can't mm. not do but mm-hmm. unfortunately for whatever reason I have to have a day job to to pay the bills but absolutely it's we do it because we love it otherwise we mm. wouldn't we wouldn't put that extra time in, I don't think. And I hope yeah. that shows with the people that we work with. But anyway, yes. Yeah, but um but yeah, I, I am actually going full time with it um as of as of September. So so yeah, I'm quite excited about that. I've um yeah, sort of really enjoyed the journey of maximum mileage over the last three years and I just love doing what I do and with everything that's happened, you know, with Ali and um you know, and her, her health and stuff, our sort of view on life has changed a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, don't really want to be stuck in the corporate life anymore. So I, I want to dedicate my my life to helping people um, with something I'm just so bloody passionate about. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, uh, excited, nervous, all at the same time. But, um, but yeah, so, so, yeah, full-time coaching as of September, which, uh, yeah, which is exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, coaching tip of the week, Faye. Let's do one yes. of them. So, uh, I know this is a, a an unpopular topic at the moment, but weather. Some people, <laughs> some people are experiencing warmer temperatures and some sunshine. I know there's a real contrast across the country at the moment. Uh, but it is warming up and we are set to go into a bit of a warm spell, I think, over the next kind of two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. So I, we were thinking, I know I can't wait. I absolutely love, I, I love the heat. I love running in the heat. I, anyway, it's an unpopular opinion, but yeah. Anyway. Well, I think it's, I think it's a, an opinion that is divided because yes. I'm, I'm in the, I like wet and cold camp. Oh, I don't. Do you know, if I could live in, shorts and t-shirt all year round i for in nice weather i'd be there yeah yeah i don't i haven't said that we've had so much bad weather for so yeah. long now that actually i'm i'm really imp- excuse me really embracing the uh the, the whole warm weather when we get it yes situation absolutely. Um, i, I want to be a better runner in in heat uh, particularly as i've got you know two big races in the summer this year so yeah, so yeah let's, let's let's talk um, about that yeah yeah. So Faye, it is that time of year where yeah. things are starting to warm up and I hear it every year. And I think I've put a post on Instagram, you know, and I talk to athletes about it every year where people start going, oh God, that run was so hard. It was so hot out there. And every year I find myself saying to people, okay, slow down. Yeah. It's, Absolutely. It, it, I mean, it, it's, it, it is sort of as simple as that. I mean, and, and the reason being is because when when the temperature does go up, what happens is that our heart has to work harder because it's got to send blood to other processes like the skin to help with um, with with the cooling process, sweat, all, all that sort of stuff. It, it actually takes takes blood for you know the blood to be pumped around the body. So it's got to be taken away from the working muscles. And as you take blood away from the working muscles, you've got less oxygen to use as a fuel source and therefore your body starts to struggle a bit more. And you will find because your 
heart is having to work harder to do all of these extra processes is that your heart rate will go up even though you know, the effort appears not to be any harder than normal well in the sense of your yes. output the feel if you feel like yeah. you're let's do it you know like we were saying before we we recorded if you you normally run a 10 minute mile hmm. feels good feels comfortable it's 25 degrees outside it's quite humid it's about i don't know three o'clock in the afternoon and you've gone out for a run that 10 minute mile is going to feel a lot harder Mm -hmm. for the reasons you've just described the extra demands on the body it's going to feel harder and as a result okay you could you could you could power through (laughs) if you so choose but it it's it may have a detrimental effect and it will certainly not make you feel very good Mm. so it's thinking about slowing down and that it's okay to slow down yeah 100 percent. so if you've got an easy run you know, if your your easy run is today and it's twenty five degrees outside, and actually, I mean, I don't think it's quite that at the moment, but you know, when the sun comes out, it can feel pretty pretty warm. And you know, that ten minute mile that you were doing two weeks ago, when it was, or even on Saturday when it was twelve degrees, yeah. Um, you know, it might need to be a twelve minute mile today because absolutely, you know, if you just stay in that in that easy kind of zone, you're going to need to slow down. So. And also so, yeah. have a think about what you're wearing. Obviously, don't mm-hmm. go inappropriate and run naked. I'm not saying that. Mm-hmm. But think about what you're wearing. <laughs> wear a hat. Mm. I know not everybody loves wearing a hat, but wear a hat. It really makes a difference. Um, pop some sun cream on and think about if you can perhaps move the time that you run. Because many people do run after work and sometimes that can be the hottest time of the day you know five o'clock can be absolutely sweltering Mm, if it's been a hot day so if there's any way that you can run later in the evening or run before work that can make a difference and perhaps you could get more out of a session because it's a bit cooler particularly if you're doing intervals or hills you know if you can do that earlier in the day or later in the day that will really make a difference yeah, and yeah, I agree. I mean, when when you're talking about needing to do speed work, if it, if it's a warm day, mm. try and try and do it early in the morning is the best time. Yeah, that's the coolest coolest part of the day. Make sure you fuel beforehand. It doesn't Absolutely. have to be anything particularly fancy. You know, half a banana, a little bit of chocolate, a gel, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a, that's a great great um, great shout. And on the hat, um, that's a good segue. It is. For- it is a good segue uh, to, to just give a little shout out to uh, Ugoku Projects. Um, lovely, lovely trail hats. Uh, I'm not actually wearing one right now, which is which is a rarity. But I've got I've got uh, I've got my little collection over there. Um, I love Ugoku hats. They are made in the UK. Very small family business. Um, I actually coach Daryl, who's the who's the owner of Ugoku. Um, he's a lovely bloke and. Uh, they make beautiful hats, all hand designed, and yeah, little shout out for Goku because they are fantastic hats. And as I always say, fuck CL. <laughs> <laughs> Goku hats are far better. They are, they are lovely, lovely hats. So thank you, Daryl, for um, for yeah, making sure that we've got Absolutely. our hats. And if you, if anybody's listening, and wants to go and buy one, Goku Projects dot com, I think it is, or if you just um, Google Goku Projects, U G O. KU. I'll put a link in the show notes as well. And you can use code MAXIMUM10 for 10% off. Yeah. Uh, Faye, today's episode, yes. we interviewed um, Sim and Jen Benson, authors Absolutely. of Smart Running um, from Vertebrate Publishing. Um, great book. We will talk all about it, but uh, it was lovely having them on. And uh, yeah, unless you've got anything else, should we get into it? Let's get into the episode. Cool. It's good to be back. Hi, Jen and Sim. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah, good. Thanks. Good to be here. (laughs) Yeah, great. Yeah, now we've got uh, Jen and Sim Benson on, uh, authors of uh, a few books, actually. I mean, we're going to probably talk about one specific book today, a a new one, which, um, as I was saying, kind of before we started recording, I uh, had actually bought 
purely off my own back. Look, like the look of it, you know. Followed, I saw that it come out, and um, and uh, Vertebrate Publishing, who your publishers are, uh, reached out to me after I'd finished reading it, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'd love to interview you guys. So, um, so I didn't hate the book at all. <laughs> good to hear. Good start. <laughs> yeah, good timing. <laughs> Yeah, no, we'll we'll come on to the book, but um, yeah, Jen and Sim for 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 kind of my uh, listeners, my and Faye's listeners, who 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 are you? Yeah, we've been writing books um, for about ten years now. I think it's ten years since our first book, Wild Running, came out, um, and that was kind of a a big step for us. We both stopped doing other jobs and um, and uh, yeah, lived lived wild for a year. <laughs> kind of working out how to make um make writing a, a full-time job and and um yeah have since written about 10 books um uh, mostly kind of guidebook style books um but but then the opportunity to write this one uh smart running came along and for me it's um like we we both have differing areas of passion and expertise and that kind of came together nicely and we'll talk about that a bit more um later on but for me I started off as a biomechanics specialist podiatrist in the NHS and in uh, private practice. So a lot of runners doing that, um, as you can imagine. And then I went on and did a master's in sport and exercise medicine, again, specialising in in distance runners, um, moving up a bit to kind of knees and hips and things. Um, and then um, currently doing a PhD in um more kind of the psychology philosophy side of running so I've moved all the way up from the feet to the head now um <laughs> and yeah running has always been an absolute passion for me and I'm just fascinated by all of it really so that's where the book came from for me <laughs> yeah I mean not much to add like we've both we've both run for a long time um we sort of met well we met working in a climbing shop but it was sort of partly to do with the running that we met um so we've been running and racing and going on adventures for i don't know 20 30 years something like that um and um yeah and uh the smart running which is the sort of the book that's out recently um is it's basically an accumulation of everything we've learned and stuff over that time really yeah and you're both athletes yourselves yes yeah yeah, yeah. we both both <laughs> run and race um of everything from like park run to 100 miles and um, yeah so yeah, yeah i've never done a park run but i did do <laughs> you have you have done a park run i did the junior park run but no i've never <laughs> <laughs> well you've got to start somewhere yeah, yeah yeah i did do the arc this year so <laughs> oh you did yeah. oh okay which is fun yeah which, which one the 50 or 100? 100 yeah 100 first 100 okay. it was a good one though yeah. yeah and how did you get on yeah it was good finished it which was the main objective walked a lot of it but no it was brilliant loved it yeah it's good <laughs> yeah I, I i i went down to support i had three people running it myself um uh 250 two in the 50s and and uh and one in the 100 and um i just came away from that race with just a real just a real magical feeling about it and i know you know it's been a bit controversial recently with uh ucmb taking it over but you know uh, Fergie and Jane are still, I, as I was saying to Fergie, you know, yes, there's four new letters above the door, but it's still the same old pub with the still same same landlords, and uh, you know, and and they want it to, they, they want to keep the atmosphere and everything. So yeah, I'm sure it'll stay um, a very special race, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think with with those guys at the helm, absolutely. It's such yeah. a cool trail as well, isn't it? Like the the running is yeah, beautiful. <laughs> And Cornwall in the yeah. winter is just amazing as well, isn't it? It's like the best place to go in the winter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you had a good good year for the weather yeah. and the year before. Yeah. Because yeah. previous years it's not been, it's not <laughs> been so kind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was uh yeah, it was a really good one. Okay, great. Um and you know, sort of you you've obviously got that background, you know, particularly Eugen with your um you know, your PhD and and you know biomechanics background. Um You've obviously seen a lot of runners over the year in that respect. Either of you kind of in the coaching realms? Yeah, yeah, we both both coach. Do you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got the UK Athletics coach qualification, and Jen has the 
You I did the US go. US um, one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, I kind cool. of wanted to go more into the ultra side of things and yeah, we coach mostly <laughs> I don't know why, but mostly mums we coach. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it. that, yeah. And I think that's a great thing because often me and Nick have this conversation and, you know, the types of people that we coach come from every single walk of life. And generally they are just like me and you who basically love running, want to push themselves, challenge themselves, but need that helping hand to balance all those many elements of life that we find ourselves working with on a daily basis. And they're the people that I think are the I think they're the best to work with. I wouldn't want to be working with, you know, full-time athletes because they're boring because all they do is train. <laughs> they train, they sleep, they eat, they repeat. Whereas, you know, normal people, as if we're going to term it like that, they, they've got all the fantastic and challenging aspects of life to go with it. So, yeah. yeah I think we all, find, awesome. we all find our niches, don't we? I mean, I yeah. I pretty much only work with parents, really, and and the people I work with that aren't parents are still kind of, you know, like me in their forties, you know, thirties, forties, full-time jobs, that kind of stuff. So, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. It's like, it's a nice, yeah. like we don't have a huge number of coaching clients um, because like as self-employed people, we do lots of things, but, um, but the coaching, yeah, the coaching is really fun and it's nice and it's nice being able to sort of have the time to, really sort of talk to and coach the people that we do so mm. yeah. it's really exciting especially with with people that have got into mostly ultra running to run it's like after kids and when they a lot of them never really ran before and then they discover often these amazing strengths that they've got and that's it's just so exciting isn't it when they like mm. you see them start achieving stuff they never thought was possible and and you know as a as a mum myself, you know, coming out the other side of having young kids, it's 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 really nice to be able to share that journey with them and kind of yeah, be on the phone to them at two in the morning when they're halfway around a backyard ultra or something. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty exciting. So yeah, yeah, enjoying that side of things as well. It's good as well because they like they have there's a whole other group of people who have questions and perspectives and things and and so they throw questions at us that we wouldn't necessarily have thought about and hasn't necessarily come up in our own running um which is which is great because it means we go off down a another rabbit hole of research or <laughs> and then find out more and it's good it's it's, it's sort of i like that you're absolutely right with coaching you're always learning and whether that's down to the person the individual that you're working with or a particular experience they've had or a question they come with like you say you're always thinking researching learning something different aren't you yeah very much i'm kind of thinking outside the box as well sometimes you know i i have a little bit of a catchphrase sometimes the the science can go fuck itself because actually sometimes you've got to think outside of the the science to think well it's that art of coaching isn't it you know versus the science of coaching it's uh you know you've got you've got to problem solve sometimes and think right what would what would kind of i do in this situation um particularly when it's you know something completely different you know backyard ultras are a great example they're so kind of new and um the limits of that are being explored yeah um, every time one happens it's uh you know th- there isn't enough research sometimes to um to go behind something like that so so yeah yeah um, yeah, well, let's, yeah. yeah. I, I was gonna say let's let's talk about research because um yeah we'll, we'll start moving on to the book because i think sort of if you don't mind this is how i would sort of explain the book to somebody who said well what what is the smart running book and for me i thought it was a really good bridge between if you are a, if you were a newer runner, for example, and you know, we get bombarded, particularly from our smartwatches, you know, VO2 max, like, oh, you know, my, I need to improve my VO2 max because my watch is telling me to. And the amount of people you go, well, do you know what VO2 max actually is? And they go, no, I haven't got a clue. It's just a number that comes up on my watch. And I think your book is a really good kind of um, segue from taking that little world to. And lots of other terms that get bandied around, you know, not just VO2 max, but so many other things that, you know, people can actually open your book and go, right, so what is VO2 max? And and you you put it in a way where it's pretty easy to understand, but it comes with a nice little kind of degree of um, the science behind it as well. 
which I also think just from you know from for me as a coach I've actually used your book a couple of times in the last last few weeks so I actually go well you know here's a really good description of the thing I'm I'm sort of trying mm. to talk to you about you know one of my athletes for example um so I think you kind of you, you sort of um cross that bridge from you know the simplistic world or you know where where people might not quite understand to actually you know even to the, the people that are pretty experienced in some of this that can actually help to then explain it back to the people who, who, who need it explaining so that was my sort of thought of it I mean I you know you cover so much in the book don't you it's you know kind of everything yeah everything <laughs> running. we tried yeah <laughs> yeah that's really good to yeah hear. so that's so, sort of my take yeah on I guess that's exactly what we wanted it to do really um and yeah I mean the science is so fascinating but it is often quite inaccessible whether that's simply because you don't have access to the journals or because it's written in a academic way and and I think as someone who spent a lot of time kind of in the in the journals and then trying to to turn that into things like magazine articles and you know disseminate it in a way that's that's interesting and accessible and stuff I, I really wanted to get that across so thank you that's nice to know that, that, that worked <laughs> yeah Faye did you uh, did, did you want to fire some of your questions no I just think as Nick mentioned around the book, I think it's so nice to, like you say, bring all the elements of running together because they are so interlinked. And oh, yeah, the, the the amount of terminology and things that are about nowadays, it can it can very easily put people off of the activity in general. <laughs> you know, it can become quite overwhelming. And I know I have this comment from people quite frequently when they start off with me they see they see themselves as not being a proper runner and it's a it's a fascinating term that I often hear people say they're like I'm not really a proper runner because I've only done x y and z or I'm not a proper runner because I've only been running for two years and I think it's very easy for people to psych themselves out because of all the many things that are out there. When you were writing this book, I think Nick's hit the nail on the head. You've made it really accessible, but really informative. How how do you approach that, whether it was with writing the book or with people you're coaching around, I suppose, setting their own personal expectations and helping them to stay within their own, their own self, I guess, because it is very easy to be overridden by other people and other things, I, I guess. Yeah, I think I think that self belief, trusting yourself and how you're feeling, and is so important and so difficult. It's so difficult to get away from all the crap, isn't it? All the like, yeah, your watch is telling you whether you're ready to do something. It's telling you whether you slept well or not, and and somewhere in there is the reality of how you're feeling. And and mm. you know, we always coach using RPE because you know. It, sometimes to start with people do struggle a bit with that so you can use like mm. in the book we've just brought in like the breathing you know how how's your breathing can you the talk test that kind of thing and linking that with RPE just to because right at the beginning it can be hard to to put a number on how hard you feel like you're working yeah mm-hmm. but we're actually really good at it you know the research shows that we're really good at you know if, if we put a number on how hard we're working that does link really well with our with our heart rate for that effort and things so is something our interoception our ability to know how hard we're working is really good and obviously that brings everything in well that brings in whether we've slept well that brings in whether we're well fueled brings in whether we're coming down with a cold so it's all those things and the watches and things try to you know use <laughs> use these kind of big algorithms to tell us these things and actually mm. it's, it's never anywhere near as good as as what's up here is it <laughs> um you're absolutely yeah. right yeah I think just getting people to trust yeah so just getting people to trust themselves and stop listening to Instagram stop listening to the watch for a bit and just go (laughs) like you know how do I feel I know what's best for me how do I feel you know how hard am I working how tired do I feel just that that's it's and it's empowering once you once you get through to somebody that they have everything they need you know the watch is good for knowing how far you've run how much vert you've done that kind of thing but it's beyond that it's it's not brilliant (laughs) for telling you anything you know that I think HRV is one of the few things that used correctly used you know first thing in the morning once you've established your baseline what's right for you what's normal for you 
can be helpful, but whether it's any more helpful than waking up in the morning and deciding how you feel is, you know, it's still debatable, isn't it? So, yeah, I think it's getting people to trust themselves, really. Isn't it? Yeah, I share a lot of uh, the sentiment there, Jen. It's, um, you know, I'm constantly saying to my athletes, you know, forget about what your what says in terms of VO2 max and um, training readiness and, you know, hill Oh, what's the what's the latest one? What's it say on mine? Hill Hill score. You know, it says I'm an eighty two. <laughs> oh, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. There, there is so much data out there, and uh, yeah, I think one of the things that sort of um, I've been involved in a chat about recently is is heart rate zones, and you know, just because you're let's say you're, you're the top end of your uh, that your zone two is one hundred and forty eight, doesn't mean that you know, you go into 149 and, you know, all of a sudden you're starting to burn more carbs um, exponentially more than, you know, at 148. It, it, it's not uh, it, it's not an absolute barrier. There, there's this crossover and, and, and we do end up coming back to how did it feel? You know, somebody goes, oh, my heart rate was 149 and, you know, it needed to be 148. Like, but how did it feel? Like, yeah, it felt easy. Well, then it probably did. Yeah. It probably was easy. Yeah. I think it I, I think and I, I, I'm this is going to lead to another question but I think nowadays where we are so caught up in technology and we're so caught up in social media and other people's stories and other people's information I think and I don't know about you Jen and Sim but over the years do you feel like people people's approach to things have um yeah the the, the way people approach things around data and information around running has affected I suppose their running in general and how how they approach it I suppose and you personally around I guess you know how's running changed in regards to the writing that you do and the coaching that you do over the, those last 10 years or so I mean pretty much everyone has a watch now don't they and um, and so pretty much everyone who runs, like it almost feels like it's one of the first things anyone buys. It's like, I'll buy some trainers and, yeah. and spend 500 quid on a watch. Well, <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so everyone's got all this data. And even if it's just like the, the sort of health apps on your phone and that you, you carry around your phone anyway. Um, but it's a free sport, right? You yeah, know, exactly. It's exactly. You do, yeah. It's you cheap. Really it's expensive. You don't spend any money on running. <laughs> Um, I think I've remortgaged my house twice to fund my yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah so everyone's got all the data and like we use training peaks when we do um when we coach so the athletes are all like it's all linked into their sort of their data and their watches and and stuff so it's all available um and it wasn't long ago that a lot of people like a few people would have a watch most people would have a stopwatch effectively um and then 10 years ago probably very few people would have had a a real like techie watch um you could get the sort of when the garmin free run forerunners started to come in yeah probably about 10 years ago but they were like like that weren't they they were like, yeah. like pretty much Six carrying seconds. a phone on your yeah. watch um yeah and so, so yeah it's changed it's changed massively from a having having all that data and i guess we used to go out for a run and you'd go out for an hour and now you go out for a run, you go out for eight miles or 10K or mm. whatever, don't you? And you did it in this much there and, and stuff. <laughs> um, so it gives, I mean, it's nice in a way because like, I like to know how far I've been in the vert and stuff. I'm not that interested in most of the rest of the things my watch tell me. Um, but it is nice to know how far you've been in a week or a month or or whatever. So I think... You used to write that down, though. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, your paper paper diary there's yeah. a there's a, a chap who lives close to us he's a like proper old school runner and he's he's always on about his like his old old notebooks and stuff and he'd do, uh, go out and do and his coach would be there with his stopwatch on the side of the tow bath shouting at him and <laughs> so it's quite different from that and I do think there's a danger now with with all the feedback you get and that's often it's often like value laden. It's often your better or your worse or your whether that's the new than you were yesterday or there's some like Strava, whether you're better or worse than someone else, or 
or you look on Instagram, you come back from a run really happy and you look on Instagram and someone's done twice as far and twice as much for it as you have. And I think there's like this constant feedback means it's much happier just to be happy with, it's much harder to just be happy with your run, isn't it? Like you might have a really good run and you come back and you receive some kind of, <laughs> that you know, this wasn't as good as yesterday's run or yeah. this wasn't as good as you did last year or like, I don't know, it wasn't as good as somebody else's run. And I think there's a real danger that retrospectively we feel worse about our run than we did when we were doing it. Like almost every time there's always something, isn't there, that's not quite good enough. And it's like that, the constant comparison with other people and with ourselves all the time. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's like a competition, like who can sleep the most or who can sleep the least or like who can, and, and everything's very extreme because that's how it sells so you you eat this or you eat this or you don't eat this and yeah everything's I think everything's got a lot more extreme and a lot more <laughs> because it I feel sells like, doesn't it and, yeah I feel like social media I'm actually having a little bit of a break from, from social media at mm. the moment because I do feel like it's gone it has gone very extreme yeah. you, you've got like in the nutrition world you've got you know this Eddie Abu is it who's who eats like 12 eggs uh, every morning and uh, with beef liver. And then there's like Oh, yes, king, I did see that, that on the... T- yeah. yeah. I did see the- that and I was like, why, why? Yeah. And then in running, it seems to... We, we seem to have gone into... Everybody wants to be like Nick Beer and get really muscly and run stupid distances. And I, I feel like it's kind of gotten... Social media's gotten lost in this world of, like you say, extreme extremities uh, or, or feuds is another one. I mean, Jen, you're you're a USCA, um certified ultra running coach. Uh, a certain principal of USCA was involved in something recently, which I wasn't particularly uh, fond of personally. Yeah. Um, but it just feels a little bit like that at the moment, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and I think that you know when it comes back to people's running it does make people kind of go to those extremes it's like oh well you know so and so is eating 12 eggs for their breakfast every day i'll have 12 eggs for my breakfast every day yeah you don't need 12 eggs for your <laughs> breakfast every day no, but then then as an alternative you should definitely be vegan like you should either have 12 mm. eggs or you should be vegan. yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so true though and i think it is very it's such a tricky and i'm saying that in the politest simplest term it's very tricky at the moment because there's so many like Nick said extreme views extreme ideas extreme you just sometimes have to remove yourself from it don't you and think right I really like running I I I want to keep running and I perhaps want to get better at running I want to do this race I'd like to do that race and it can be really hard to kind of separate yourself from from those factors but but when you take the time to do it I think you get more out of it because as you said Jen you're not constantly comparing yourself to whether it's the data whether it's that you are slower or quicker than someone else or slower than five years ago you know it's um it it does you do reap the rewards if you if you give yourself that time and that space I think and all the fads and like whether that's eating or shoes or like anything, it's like pretty much they're all an extreme of something. And mm. probably almost everyone is better off about in the middle. And <laughs> like, so if you imagine like all of those things, there might be a couple of people who would benefit from very high protein or super low drop shoes or whatever. But almost everyone doesn't like almost everyone. You're going to be better off just being reasonably sort of normal <laughs> um yeah and, and you know i think just kind of you know bring us right back to the, the topic of your book and i think this is exactly what i loved about your book is that it it kind of goes oh, well yeah, i've seen something on and, and this is where i would say anybody who's listening go and buy the book and i'm not just doing that as a little you know kind of a sales pitch for you guys but go and buy the book and then when you see something on instagram and you think well that sounds too good to be true. Like oh, I saw one of these, is it Jeremy Miller, one of these hybrid fitness influencer type people saying that if you do a four by four minute interval session, you'll increase your VO2 max by 13%. Like I would give my left arm to improve my VO2 max by 13%. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, when, when you sort of see these kind of sensationalist things, actually, do you know what? Pick up Jen and Sim's book and have a little look and have a read about VO2 Max and actually how you can improve it and actually how little you can improve it because, you know, a lot of VO2 Max is actually comes down to uh, genetics. But, you know, it, it, your book does a really good kind of um, job, I think, of just putting things into a, um, a, a proper perspective, not this kind of, you know, sensationalist, clickbaity kind of stuff that you're going to get on, on Instagram. Yeah, hopefully. I'm, I've always, well, Sim always, poor Sim knows, I've got quite a highly developed bullshit detector. So <laughs> <laughs> as soon as anyone says, oh, did you know that? I'm like, really? What's like, where's the evidence? How, how does that work then? You know, I'm, I'm quite annoying, mm. I think, but, but it is what, it just annoys me so much. And even the feud you were referring to, it's like, I don't know, if you let someone tell you what to eat and you get it in packets and and you believe everything that's written on that packet and everything you're told it will do for you and then you're kind of setting yourself up for that kind of thing you're putting a lot of trust in in other people to to put the stuff they say isn't you know we know that so many sports supplements are contaminated with stuff that isn't on the packet you know almost it yeah it's it's like it's a (laughs) it's a huge problem and we I don't really want to be eating stuff that I don't know what it is and and if you want so many grams of carbohydrate whether that's whether eating 90 to 100 grams of carbohydrate is right for anyone other than mm-hmm. like Robbie Britton I don't know <laughs> but but you know it's, it's kind of working it out for yourself listening to the balanced arguments like um and understanding that that just because one person eats this type of energy gel or can smash down 100 grams of carbohydrate an hour or just eats eggs you know it's it's not necessarily for everyone and and there's that like that again coming back to trusting yourself and working out what works for you and trial and error and and all that kind of thing and you know I was was listening to your episode um with Dr Rich can't remember his surname yeah yeah. um and I love those like the I read a lot of of systematic reviews and and meta-analyses because it's it's time effective apart from anything else, isn't it? Rather than having to go through all, yeah. all the individual studies. But at the same time, if you look at, at the populations, you know, I mainly work with 30 to 40 year old postpartum women. And, you know, the sports science research on women in general is pretty minimal. And then you look at postpartum women and it's non-existent. So like strength mm-hmm. training, the benefits of strength training, especially lifting heavy when it comes to women who might have abdominal separation or pelvic floor issues all these things it's like you just can't take (laughs) even the best research you can't just take that and and assume it fits everyone you really have to look at what what absolutely yeah I I don't know where that started but anyway (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely completely agree. And this is again, this is sort of where I just go back to sometimes, you know, the science can go F itself because it doesn't apply to everybody, particularly in the sports world. You you're right, you know, so many studies are done on twenty five year old, you know, sub elite male athletes that, you know, some of it just doesn't it's like the whole I'm of the opinion that the whole train hard, you know, have your hard days hard and your easy days easy. For the sort of people I work with, 90% of the time, that doesn't work because doing a strength session and an interval session on the same day is exhausting for some people. And I just end up going, well, let's separate them. Yeah. So they do, you know, strength training one day, intervals the next day, or vice versa, or usually usually the other way around. Um, so they've got fresher legs. But, you know, it, it, it's exactly that kind of sort of um, approach I take is that, you know, we've sometimes got to take the science with a pinch of salt. But ha- having said that, you know, you, you, your your book and and I would, this is a question I got for you actually. It's like how how long has it actually taken you to put the book together? I know it's sort of <laughs> you, you probably say, well, it's it's a you know it is an accumulation of what we've sort of you know done over the last ten years. But because you cover so many topics, um, you know, finding all those articles and things to cite, you know, the, uh, not articles, the, but, you know, um, the PMIDs and everything, you know, must have been quite a laborious task. Yeah, it probably was three years of specific wow. work on it. Um, it wasn't meant to be quite that long. And then, 
vertebrate were very very patient with us <laughs> but yeah trying to work out like sitting down in the first place and just trying to work out what what should go in it and um yeah sim sim loves the the nav and the kit and stuff so he wrote that bit and i wrote the most of the sciencey bits so we kind of shared it out in that way but but yeah it was a it was a pretty <laughs> lengthy process i think <laughs> Yeah, but that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing that, you know, you took that time and you did that. That just shows the time and the the attention that went into the book and the value that's in that. And I think that's, you know, maybe, maybe the publishers weren't so fond, but in the sense of it was totally worth it in the end and taking that time to make sure that what you were talking about contained that important information but again coming back to making it accessible and usable for people it's really hard to know when to stop as well because you think you've done it and then a new paper comes out and you're like I've got to got to put this in and then yeah. something else comes out that's like no that's definitely wrong and you've got to like change that <laughs> so at some point you just have to stop and go this is as good as it can get and then that is so hard isn't it like you think about how research moves you know, it's, it's changing all the time. Paper Things are being, you know, updated. And that's the thing with writing books, I guess. And, you know, you can never... That, I guess that is the beauty and the frustration of books. They're wonderful because they're in the moment, they're there. You, re, you sit down, you read it. But obviously that data has moved on since print and then something new's out there. But I guess that is the great thing about a book and in the sense if we go back to that conversation about social media and things which is changing on an hourly well minute basis a book you can sit down with a coffee read what you want to read when you want to read it at the pace you want to read it and that's why you know it's so great for people with things, uh, you know, now you've got the book kind of laid out and with things like, you know, we've just, just explained, things do change so quickly and, you know, one day a new paper might come out that completely kind of changed the landscape of one of the things you've written about. But you've got the book now, you know, will you be sort of staying on top of things and then bringing out, you know, second editions, third editions? Is that kind of the plan? Yeah, I hope so. And um, um, I mean, so far there's been loads of, Loads of really polite, nice feedback, which is good. But we're definitely really keen for, like, if anyone spots something in there they don't agree with, or, um, you know, we're, we're keen to have that feedback too. Um, and yeah, it's something that hopefully they'll let us update every few years so we can keep it as current and relevant as possible. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Well, um, you know, I, I think. Th- the, that's the thing I love about the book. It is a book that you can read cover to cover, but it's also it, it is one of kind of kind of one of those reference books. And I, yeah. I particularly would think for um you know for for kind of the everyday runner who might want that sort of fountain of of information if they particularly if they don't have a coach and they want to ask a question instead of going on the Facebook groups and asking the masses for their opinions. You know, everybody has an opinion. Um, you know, I think it's a really good place for you to go. Oh, God, I've got a question about such and such. Right, let's let's get Smart Running open, and um, and it and it will invariably answer that question for you. So, I congratulate you on a on a on a fantastic book. Um, I will continue to use it. Um, you know, to to reference back to. Um, so yeah, thank you for for coming on, Faye. Was there anything sort of you wanted to? No, I don't think so. I I um I have not finished the book yet. I have only part read it, but so far love it and think it's great. So yeah, well done for for putting together uh, a a great informative but accessible book for people. Thank you very much. That's really nice to hear. Yeah, <laughs> thank, thank you. And um, thanks for being no yeah. been fun. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will put um, links in the show notes to the book. Um, best place to get it on Vertebrates website or Amazon or all yeah. of the above. Yeah, yeah anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got the Kindle version. Yeah, nice and easy for me. I always like lying in bed to uh, read read me read, read me Kindle. Um, it's that kind of book though that I. It is not very good for me trying to fall asleep because I'm like, oh. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, I always like to ask, where can people find you? Uh, we're at Jen and Sim on Instagram and Twitter, although we don't do much with Twitter. Um, and we're Jen and Sim Benson.co.uk. There's more about the books and coaching and that kind of thing. Yeah, cool. 
All right, brilliant. Thank you, Jen and Tim. And um, uh, as we determined just before uh, the call, you're only down the road, so I'll give you a shout and we'll uh, maybe go for a run. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Go for a run. <laughs> I could run to yours. <laughs> yeah, I know. We could run there and back. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cheers, both. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Goodbye. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Mileage Running Podcast. You can find more out about us at MaximumMileageCoaching.com. If you think you need help with your running and you think that either myself or Faye could be the coach for you, then drop us an inquiry. No uh, obligation whatsoever and we'll have a chat with you about your running. And there's plenty of resources on the website as well. And don't forget you can join us on the Maximum Mileage Running Podcast Facebook group. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.